in sports, the scoreboard doesn't tell the full story, but Netflix does. Stories about dads who happen to be world-class quarterbacks and a battle for the heart, soul, and direction of the multi-billion dollar business of F1. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're brand new, Netflix has the stories for every type of fan. You can watch these incredible sports stories like quarterback, F1 Drive to Survive, Untold, and many more now on Netflix. Hello and welcome to a new podcast, The Paddock and the Pavilion with Stephen Wallace. In each show, Stephen will interview someone connected to the world of horse racing or cricket. Hello and welcome to The Paddock and the Pavilion. In today's episode, we've got two guests, George and Ed Gowler. George, Wisbeach Cricket Club's 17-year-old opening bowler, who has just been selected to join the Northamptonshire County Cricket Academy, And we all know how much a parent does to help their children on the road to success. So I thought I'd ask Dad Ed to tag along. Remember to rate and review the show on all your podcast outlets. It really does help. Enjoy today's podcast. Hello, George and Ed. A happy new year to you both. And thank you for being on the paddock and the pavilion. Hi, hi, Stephen. It's great to be on here. Hi, Stephen. Thank you very much. And you're still there, Ed, yeah? Absolutely, yes. Thanks for asking us on, Stephen. That's all right. Well, on today's podcast, I'm mainly, sorry, Ed, going to chat to George about being chosen to join the North Ants County Cricket Academy and his cricketing career so far. But to start with, how are you both? How are you, George? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. 2020 was um, was an odd year for everyone, but it wasn't too bad for me, uh, obviously, because I got a place in the academy, so I'm pretty good at the moment. Well, that's good. Are you, are you back at school yet? So I start online lessons tomorrow and I think the plan is to get back uh, on the 18th for me because I'm not on any exam yet. I presume being 17, you don't get any homeschooling from dad then? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't at the moment, no. <laughs> Would he not be very good at that? No. Uh, no, he, I think he has enough to do. <laughs> <laughs> and Ed, um Father of George, how are you? Yeah, all good, thank you, Stephen. Yeah, it's um, as George said, very, very strange Christmas and New Year, but um, yeah, I think it's a lot, lot worse off than we are. So yeah, not too bad, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Well, to get to begin with, George, congratulations on your news. But um, what was your initial reaction when you found out you'd been uh, invited to join the academy? Well, I had a, a shortened summer of cricket and played uh, most of them games uh, with the academy. So I was happy to uh, play in the setup. Uh, and then it came to September, and that's when the kind of selection process is, as we know from previous years. And um, I didn't have, I didn't think I was going to get the call. Uh, I thought I'll just kind of sit on the uh, outskirts and just still uh, next year play for the academy. But, um, and then we got the call through. Uh, in September and the academy directors mentioned that I got a place in the academy and it was really surprising news and it was really great. And dad what did you feel when you heard the news? Yeah I I was really happy because obviously I'm seeing it all from the background but um, I've been through it a bit with my older son and it's it's really hard to see them putting all of their effort in and, and, and sometimes getting missed and I thought this was just going to be another opportunity gone this year, where they they hadn't had a full he hadn't had a full season, hadn't been able to sort of really show himself. And I thought, oh, no, another opportunity gone. So it was a real surprise, and um, yeah, massive relief, and really happy for him. Well, that's really great local news as well. But um, going back to George's cricketing career, I know you're only 17, but when and and why did you first start playing cricket? So my dad really got me into it. He used to play cricket when I was younger at the local club, Wimbledon. And um, so I, I, he took me there and I played uh, my junior games there. And then when I, get, when I got a bit older, um, when I got to um, the age of 12, I moved over to Wisbeach because it was just a high, higher standard of game. And that's where I wanted to play my adult cricket because uh, they were in higher league. And were you always a bowler when you first started? Um, no, I actually, um, I actually thought I was a batsman when I was younger. Uh, I went into Cambridgeshire County trials as a batsman and then bowled better than I could bat. 
<laughs> I got a laugh from dad there. I know yeah. that um, you're talking about county trials. When did you first get um, county recognition for Cambridgeshire? Um, so I went in when I was 10 in the under 10s programme and that I got put through by a Wimbledon coach. And then you got spotted, I read, by Northamptonshire at quite an early age, though, in the Cambridgeshire age groups, didn't you? Yeah, um, it must have been under 14s. I played against Northampton in a, in a Cambridge v Northampton game. And there was um, a coach there which invited me to one of the sessions. And Dad, uh, Dad, I guess, Ed, you must have done lots of driving around for various age groups where George has played for, for Cambridgeshire. Oh, it's, it's non-stop all over the country I think the worst one was we were meant to be going to Sussex and they let us get all the way there and the groundsman decided at the last minute to call the game off and had to come all the way back again but yeah done a fair share of traveling well they always say that the parents do so much to support uh, the children in their early days so uh, I guess George um, hasn't passed his driving test yet so He's been doing his lessons and he's got his test booked for the end of January, but I'm not sure how that will be affected now with how things are. But the sooner that can, I put him as soon as he was 17 on an intensive course so he can drive himself a lot more. Well, let's hope you're able to do that soon. But I have to ask this question, but you moved from Wilmington to Wisbeach uh, for our highest standard of cricket. But living as you do near March, why did you choose to join Wisbeach? So it was actually my brother who moved over to Wisbeach first. He went to the local grammar. He went to the grammar school in Wisbeach, and there was a coach there, James Williams, who was a player at Wisbeach. Uh, he moved him. He wanted him to play for Wisbeach, and then I moved there because well, my brother was there. But Wisbeach Grammar School is a very good school for cricket, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's why I'm at at the moment. And uh, James Williams, he's made a big difference to your career. Yeah, 100%. He um, did lots of um, coaching with me inside school and outside school with a few lessons uh, over a few winters. And so James is a former Cambridgeshire captain. And hasn't the school at Wisbech Grammar got a connection also with Northamptonshire? Yeah, I think they um, uh, made a connection uh, when I got uh, put in the EPP, the Northampton EPP. Yeah, for listeners, can you just tell me what the EPP stands for and what, yep. what that involved? Yeah, of course. It's a step down from the academy. Uh, it's for young age groups, uh, usually 13 to 17, and that's the Emerging Players Programme. And you've been on there since you were? 14. 14. So two years. And that's the stepping stone to the academy. And uh, I read that um, you're one of only four to have been added to the academy for 2021 and when do you actually start i've got a fitness session on wednesday we were meant to start earlier of course but um due to the uh covid19 we're starting up again in on wednesday at the northamptonshire county ground as an indoor school there and how long can you be on the um, academy for is it to a couple of years uh yeah i think it's two years now the academy, what what sort of things does it involve? Is it just cricket or is it um, other things as well? Yeah, um, so they monitor your fitness and uh, all that. And also they uh, offer a BTEC uh, course to take uh, for the two years that you're on there. If you're, um, uh, if you're in lower six, if you're in that year, if you're in my year. So that's, I'm taking on that and that's um, with the ECB. So presumably you're doing your A-levels yeah, I've started my A-level course this year, and that's a two-year course. I'm doing maths, economics, and chemistry. Well, hopefully you'll actually take some exams. Uh, yeah. <laughs> who knows, really? Um, we, we, sorry, it's, it's Ed again, Stephen. We, um, the, the, the course that they've offered him is run by the ECB. Is David Graveney runs it. Oh, yes, so yeah. We had a very interesting Zoom call with David Graveney. I never thought I'd be chatting to him in, uh, in my front room, but... Um, yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah, well, most people have had Zoom calls they didn't expect, but so he was a <laughs> form, former England uh, test selector. So it, it is important, though, that it's not just cricket, Ed, on the course. Yeah, I, I'm sort of learning bits about it, but I know that there's a lot of support given 
kind of counselling wise and um and 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 with the education as well. So they're going to work closely with with Wisbeach Grammar to make sure he's not missing any important lessons. It it does seem like it's very well thought out. They've obviously been through it all before, but it's um on and off the field. And how how often in the winter, uh, George, are you going to be netting? So I think we aim for a three times a week. I think that's what's planned. And have you got a fitness program at home that you're supposed to do as well while you while you're not there? Yeah, because we missed so many sessions, they did set us a fitness program to do um, at home. They're monitoring that. And presumably, um, Dad will be checking that you do all the things you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I think he's going to be blowing at his first um, fitness session on Wednesday from um, all of the mince pies and Christmas pudding. <laughs> <laughs> well, will you still be able to play for Wisbech in 2021, George? Yes, unless there's a four-day game that's going to go over on a Saturday, uh, I'll be able to play for Wisbech. So you'll be able to play in the Whiting's uh, Premier League again this year? Yeah. So who? what sort of teams do the academy play during the summer? Uh, we play Leicestershire Academy, all the other academies. Yeah, we play the other academies uh, and, and all the other counties that like uh, under 19 age group. And also some of us get picked to play second team cricket as well. I was just going to say, will you get a chance to play from second 11 games? Do, are there a range of um, like 20 overs, 50 overs and two and three day games as well? Yeah, so uh, we didn't play any three day games in the short and summer. Uh, but we did play a lot of 50 over games, 20 T20s and uh, 100 games as well. Oh, right. So what, what did you think to playing a 100 game? That must have been something different. Uh, it was very, very similar to a T20. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. And I, I, I read that two of the academy players um, of 2020 uh, played for uh, North Ants in the Bob Willis Trophy this year. Yeah, that's true. I know one of them, Harry Goldstone, he's a keeper. I know I know him, he's a good lad. And Ed, I guess you're going to be going to watch quite a few of these games for the academy. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons that I really don't mind where I have to take him to, because I love cricket. I think if it was a sport that I didn't like, it would be a chore, but it's certainly not a chore. The, the difficult thing's going to be when he can actually drive himself, and I haven't really got an actual reason to be there, um, but I'll, I'll go and watch as much as I can. Good. And George, is it your old ultimate aim to play first class cricket? So if we go step by step, the next the next goal is definitely to play second team cricket. And then we see where we go from there. If I'm good enough, then definitely that's the that's the goal. Good. Now, just going back to Wisbeach again, you'll be playing for them next season. You, uh, I see, took uh, the most wickets for them last year in the first 11 with 11 wickets in the five games. What was it like playing in in sort of COVID cricket 2020? Um, yeah, it was very weird. We kept stopping, I think it was every six overs for sanitising. And you weren't allowed in the changer room. So it was definitely different. But on the playing side, um, obviously it all went well for me. Yeah, I mean, hopefully this season it, it won't be quite so bad on some of those regulations. But you fear that when the season starts, you'll probably still be cleaning the ball and bringing your own tea and that sort of thing yeah exactly <laughs> must have spoiled some of the atmosphere though uh, when you can't sort of and you're changing in your car and turning up changed yeah it, def- it did i did definitely um yeah it was definitely a different experience what about your targets this season playing for Wisbeach? um i i hope we do well i think we have the potential to do really well in this league we definitely had some really good games last year, like the Eaton Soken game. So I think we have the definitely have the potential to do well and for me just to impact the team as best as I can. Well, I was hoping you weren't going to say for our listeners uh, the uh, the target was to beat March, so uh, you didn't get that one in. So uh... <laughs> that's definitely the target. <laughs> but um, one of the other things we do on this program is we ask people for their favourites and um and why they're their favourite. No doubt you've been to watch quite a bit of cricket with um, Dad being the chauffeur. What's Who would be your favourite batsman and why? Batsman. Um, I, I love watching Ben Stokes bat. I know it's everyone's favourite, but I, on TV I love watching. I've never actually seen him bat in, in real life, but um, for me, batsman-wise, it's Ben Stokes. 
And being a bowler yourself, who would be your favourite bowler? I love what I loved watching Brody bowl this year. Um, he was he was he bowled really well. What I watched, and um, yeah, for me, it's Stuart Broad. And what about the favourite ground you've been to watch cricket? Oh, probably Trent Bridge. Yeah. Very nice ground. Yeah, I didn't think you'd say the Avenue there, so at March. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, what's your favourite other sport? Rugby, probably. I play that at school. And that's, uh, I enjoy playing that in off season. Well, thank you both very much uh, for being on the paddock and the pavilion. This is the first time I've interviewed two people on the show. And uh, George, I'll follow your season with interest in 2021. And thank you again for being on the show. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. This episode was recorded on the 4th of January. As an elite sportsman, George did commence his winter training with the Northamptonshire Cricket Academy on Wednesday the 7th, but following the national lockdown announcement, he did not return to Wisbridge Grammar School. George is now doing all his schooling remotely, but not with Dad's help. Thank you for listening to The Paddock and the Pavilion. You can download the show on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at The Pad and Pad. Podcast Network. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.